My name is Maxwell Sorensen. I am a library media specialist at Elkhorn Area Middle School in Elkhorn, or. Hi, my name is Maxwell Sorensen, and I am a library media specialist at Elkhorn Area Middle School in Elkhorn, Wisconsin. Every single day, I am fortunate enough to work with students who come in and use our library to further their education. Now, a number of those students face challenges on a daily basis that are out of their control. And we as librarians need to capitalize on available options to make accommodations for them. As you can see from the beginning of this presentation, certain scenarios and obstacles make it difficult to communicate, and as a result, make it difficult to learn. According to the ALA's core competencies of librarianship, librarians should know how to provide assistive resources for users of the library. There are effective options available to help make accommodations for all users of the library. Now, in this presentation, I will introduce and go over some powerful tools that can help make your library more accessible to more users. As of December 2017, the American Printing House for the Blind reported that nearly 63,000 students have vision impairments. Now, it is quite obvious that a large amount of material and resources in a library requires sight to be accessed. An available accommodation for library users with vision impairments are two programs known as ZoomText and JAWS. ZoomText and JAWS work together so users can make customized adjustments to help enhance visual information on the computer. Along with that, ZoomText and JAWS offer a screen reading option to help the visually impaired navigate the internet. Let's take a look. When you first start ZoomText Fusion, you'll be greeted with the ZoomText toolbar. Zoom text enabled. For existing ZoomText 11 users, all of your magnification-related settings and features you're already familiar with will be found here on the Magnifier tab. 2.2.5 Zoom Windows Window Button ex Color Enhancements Enabled Color Enhancements Disabled On the Reader tab of the ZoomText toolbar, you can enable and disable speech, as well as adjust the speech rate. Menu, disable. To move through items, press up or down arrow. Voice split button. Out followed by our comma. V, leaving menus. Rate edit spin box. 95, 99%, 100%. The rest of your speech settings you'll find in the JAWS for ZoomText Fusion system tray item. You can easily bring this up by pressing insert J, JAWS context menu or clicking the red colored shark fin icon in the system tray. Along with all of the great new features that come with the most recent releases of ZoomText 11 and JAWS 18, Fusion gives you the benefit of being able to run both products together seamlessly, allowing you to do things like use virtual keyboard navigation on the web to jump between headings quickly. ZoomText 11 colon elevate your experience heading level 1. Helping people is our priority heading level 2. Additionally, ZoomText Fusion now supports high-quality Vocalizer Expressive engines for the most ear-pleasing screen reader experience you've ever heard. Heading level 1 ZoomText 11 colon elevate your experience. It's more than just a new version of ZoomText, it is the best version of ZoomText ever. The Zoom Text and JAWS features are so successful because of how customizable they are. They allow students who previously did not have access or the ability to use the internet to now use it independently. During the 2015-2016 school year, it was reported by the National Center for Educational Statistics that over 17,000 students were either deaf or hard of hearing. In education, or any collaborative setting really, spoken word plays a vital role. And without any accommodations, that disconnect in communication can become a major obstacle. An available tool to help accommodate for students with hearing disabilities is an app called Live Caption. What this app does is turn any spoken word into text and present it on a tablet or mobile device. This is a perfect tool for library lessons, book talks, or even guest speakers. Let's take a look at it. Live Caption now works as great for iPads as it does for iPhones, period. 
And if you have an Apple TV, you can connect it to a larger screen so you can stream the captions to a larger audience, period. Download live caption from iTunes or Google Play today. Exclamation point. The live caption app is convenient and effective because of its flexibility. Because it's, it's accessible on phones and tablets, it helps break down the communication barrier in real time. During the 2015 and 2016 school year, the National Center for Educational Statistics reported that 13% of students ages 3 to 21 were served under the Individuals with Disabilities Education Act. Of that 13%, over 1 in 10 students had a physical disability. A major obstacle for library users with physical disabilities is accessing information on the internet, mainly due to mobility challenges. One way to help accommodate for this is by using a tool named the Tracker Pro. Now the Tracker Pro allows a student to use head movement to control the computer's mouse, therefore reducing the amount of hand and arm movement during computer usage. Let's take a look. Hello, today we're going to talk about Tracker Pro, a plug and play head mouse that enables the user to control a mouse by moving their head and is compatible with Mac OS X, Windows, Chrome, and Android operating systems. To set up Tracker Pro, place Dual Lock on the stand and Tracker Pro tab, and connect Tracker Pro to the stand. Place the stand on the monitor or table surface and plug Tracker Pro into an available USB port on the computer. Once plugged in, you'll see the white power LED is lit, which indicates it is on. Place a Tracker Pro reflective dot on your forehead or on glasses and wait for Tracker Pro to detect the tracking dot. The blue LED light indicates that Tracker Pro has recognized the tracker dot. For left and right mouse clicks, you can use two external switches with Tracker Pro, or you can use an automatic mouse clicking software like Dwell Clicker 2. To use switches with Tracker Pro, simply plug a switch adapter cable into the switch port on Tracker Pro. The white jack indicates a left click, and the red jack indicates a right click. In my opinion, I'd say that the Tracker Pro is probably one of the biggest breakthroughs in technological accessibility. Many of us really take for granted our fine motor skills and our ability to move. And similarly, many of us don't really think about the required abilities that it takes to access information on the internet. When you really break it down, one of the most important requirements is being able to move that mouse around. Before the technology was really developed, we'd, we'd have to work really one-on-one -on -one with students and, and navigate the internet for them. The Tracker Pro not only allows them to do it and do the searching on the internet, but it allows them to do it independently and conveniently. Also during the 2015-2016 school year, it was reported that nearly 300,000 students enrolled in public schools had a learning disability. Now, that doesn't even include the 78,000 diagnosed with autism. And due to such circumstances, it is important that us as librarians, especially in schools, have tools to accommodate different learners. A major tool in assisting such learners is Google Read and Write. This is a free feature through Google that helps individuals who need extra assistance with reading. Let's take a look how this works. Google Apps for Education are everywhere. You might well be using them in your own school along with millions of other students and teachers. Google Apps are great, but what about students who need a little extra help? Working with documents and the web can be a challenge for struggling readers and writers, English language learners, and students with learning disabilities like dyslexia. Okay, let's see how easy it is to use. Highlight any passage of text and hear it read out loud. You can pick different voices and adjust reading speed to suit any listener. Speech to text accurately transcribes your students' words as they talk. It's ideal for capturing thoughts on the fly, especially for people who find typing tricky. Word prediction helps reluctant writers, offering word suggestions as you type. There's a talking dictionary, picture dictionary, and fact finder that make research faster, easier, and more fun. And there's a translator for other languages, such as French and Spanish. Google Read and Write is a powerful, powerful tool, especially in our schools. We have so many different types of learners. The Google Read and Write feature offers assistance to students who need help reading. 
It gives them customized assistance when a teacher's not available. And I think most importantly for me, it, it can be used both at school and at home. It's implemented in nearly every classroom at my school. One of the biggest questions I get when discussing library accessibility tools is, how much is it going to cost? Which, rightfully so, is something that we need to keep in mind. Granted, some of these tools are free, specifically from this presentation, the Google Read and Write, but others do cost money. I've included a link to the American Library Association's grant page. There, you can find a large amount of grants that you can apply for that will hopefully help you get the funds for your library to get these tools. As you can see, there are some very powerful tools available to help librarians make their library more accessible. I truly believe that these tools should not be optional and that we as librarians need to make it our responsibility to make certain that our libraries are available to be used by everyone, no matter if they have a disability or not. If you have any questions or would like to discuss this topic further, please do not hesitate to contact me. My email information will be provided at the end of this presentation. Once again, thank you for watching, and let's make the library a place for all users and students to be successful.